Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give my top 10 list for best Linux applications that happen to be free. Now, one thing that you'll quickly learn about Linux, if you haven't already started using it, is that most applications happen to be free, which is one of the cool things about Linux. But there's definitely a certain bunch of applications which most systems are going to want. And the first tool to start that off is definitely going to be LibreOffice. It's so prevalent on Linux that uh, most of the distributions I have installed just come with LibreOffice out of the box. You can see here on Ubuntu, um, we even have it on the main toolbar, LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Impress, which respectively are the free alternatives to Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. And surely you have heard of those programs. Uh, they are necessary for doing general business work, general school work. Uh, just things that no computer should really go without in this day and age and you get it for free, which is super awesome So Libre package is an amazing uh, Tool and they even have additional tools beyond just that like LibreOffice math and LibreOffice base for uh, writing up mathematical formulas and connecting to databases Next up is Mozilla Thunderbird. Um, I did talk about this one in my Windows video, and I do think the Windows 10 Mail application is a good alternative, but on Linux, you really don't have uh, that same tool in order to check your email. So uh, Mozilla Thunderbird is really good for connecting all of your email accounts uh, into one centralized area where you can basically... Uh, kind of unify your inboxes, check all your mail at once. You can also add in uh, chat clients, though not Skype, which is a bit unfortunate, um, and RSSS feeds, which means you can read news or you can uh, keep up to date on the latest podcasts because uh, pretty much all podcast feeds also have RSS. Uh, that you can put into Mozilla Thunderbird. So, oh, and it also has calendar functionality. So it's a really good all-in-one tool for keeping track of uh, digital communications. Um, obviously, it's not going to do everything. I would still like to use Skype and that kind of thing in addition to it, which is our number five. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, but uh, let's see here. VLC Media Player. Okay, so this one I would install on pretty much any of my systems, no matter what operating system you're on. But it's just a really clean media player um, that has maximum compatibility for all the different videos you may want to watch on that or music. Um, the interface is relatively simple. It doesn't go overboard on anything, but it is just a really solid player. And if you ever need to do things like put subtitles in, uh, it's pretty easy to do that kind of thing too. I mean, uh, in, in terms of... Com uh, like comparing it to another tool if you're on Windows Media Player Classic Windows Media Player Classic that is um, they're both fine tools but once again you don't have Windows tools on Linux so I would definitely go with VLC Media Player uh, other ones out there I, I think Banshee is installed to Ubuntu by default but VLC is just the tool I usually go with um, but yeah it's kind of a pick the one you like kind of world there next is Audacity uh, so this is a tool that maybe not every potential use for. So if you want to record audio, this is the best free tool to do it in. So as long as you have a microphone connected to your computer, you would select that from the list. You can record, then you can apply things like uh, audio effects to it. Noise reduction is a really common one I like to use. Um, it's a great tool for just editing sound clips. Uh, obviously, I use it because I'm making videos, but if you're just going to send some kind of sound clip to your friends or you want to edit some audio, uh, audio together just for fun, maybe not necessarily for profit, um, then Audacity is just going to be a really solid tool for you. It's completely free. It gives you a lot of tools. Uh, I think you can even do music and that kind of thing using this. Um, obviously, you could uh, edit together different pieces of music. Uh, might not be the ideal music editor but it's uh, yeah it's possible to do a bunch of audio editing with it and for free uh, you can't get better value than that um, okay so Skype for Linux uh, I think it did install it on this uh, installation of Ubuntu this is like a fresh install of Ubuntu um, but anyway Skype for Linux exists you can install it on pretty much any um, Linux distribution so here if I go let's just check out Skype for Linux um, 
you install it as a package, it's not really too complicated to install. So because I'm on Ubuntu, we would install it as a .deb file. One of the great things about Ubuntu is that when they do port software over to Linux, uh, .deb, uh, which is Debian actually, uh, Ubuntu is based on Debian, um, you'll get the maximum amount of compatibility out of the box. You won't need to mess with it like you might in some lesser distributions, lesser known distributions, I should say. Um, but yeah, Skype is a great communication tool, video calling, uh, text messages, or just audio calls. Beautiful. Uh, most of it is free. So like unless you want to call uh, phones directly, you can just use it for free and then they have premium services on top of that. Um, yeah, great tool. I, I would not want to go without that. So next is the Steam client. So this also exists on Windows, of course, but they have ported uh, Steam over to Ubuntu in recent years. Um, now the problem is that a lot of games just haven't been coded for Linux. So if you have a Steam library on Windows already and you go over to Linux, you're going to only see about a third of your games being playable, but there's still plenty of free-to-play games, um, games that do exist on Linux and that you, you can kind of search through the store and find ones that are Linux compatible. Um, so there's a good amount of gaming to be had on Linux. Oh, and I could really add like a number 10 on top of this, the Wine Emulator. So W-I-N-E, if you do want to install Windows games, like let's say Hearthstone, Battle.net stuff, or League of Legends, that's the tool you want to do to do that. Now, getting games to actually work on Wine, it's a bit more complicated, but if you're just looking for some straight up fun, easy to get going, you can download and install games with the Steam client. It's just as easy as it is on Windows. So definitely the tool you want if you want to do gaming on Linux and you're not a super uber tech nerd. Um, okay, so uh, number seven, technically speaking here, uh, Spotify for Linux. So. Um, it's not, I think it's kind of still in like a beta-ish phase, I'm not 100% sure, but you can actually install Spotify for Linux, uh, even if you're on like an Arch distribution, you can install Spotify for Linux through the Arch user repository and Yowart. Um, and Spotify is a music player that allows you to basically stream music from a horde of different artists out there. It's ad supported and you can get it for Linux now, which is really cool. If you like to stream music, it's a great tool uh, as long as you're in one of the countries that support it or um, you can always, you know, fake your location with the VPN if you really want to go that route. Um, yeah, Spotify is pretty awesome. Um, next up, so this is actually again Battle for Westnoth. Uh, here's a screenshot of it, and the only reason I'm including this is because it is a legitimately fun free-to-play game um, that I, uh, you know, played with some of my real friends um, in the past, and it's good multiplayer. The single-player campaign isn't too bad. Uh, it's got the strategic combat where I uh, basically have a bunch of units. They can go fight other units, and it's turn-based, so you have to move them over the map and that kind of thing. Certain units are going to be stronger against other units, and uh, as they, um, you know, slay enemy units, they also level up, which adds a new dynamic to the game. Uh, I think there's a game that it's really uh, heavily based on. I want to say, like, I can't actually remember it off the top of my head, but it's something from, like, the early 90s or 80s or something like that. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's free to play, and you can pick it up if you're using Ubuntu in the Ubuntu Software Center. But I'm sure you can get it on any version of Linux just as easily. Okay, so next up is Inkscape. Uh, this is a tool I haven't actually uh, experimented with too much, but um, I have used Adobe Illustrator, and this is the free answer to Adobe Illustrator. So GIMP is basically Photoshop made free and it's great if you want to edit photos and that kind of thing but what a vector based editing program like Inkscape is for is if you want to create art that is really easily scalable because it works in vectors which means um, it's not pixel based it works in vectors and you can scale a vector infinitely in any direction and it will always maintain a hundred percent of uh, I guess you would call it like the graphical fidelity which means if you want to take an image and you want to put it on a giant wall or wallpaper or you want to print it out on a piece of paper or maybe you just want it to be exported as a PNG um, at a specific size for the web shrinking it down a bit that uh, you will get the ideal look no matter 
how much you scale it. And that's the advantage of vector-based editing programs like Illustrator. So if you want to do vector-based editing on Linux, Inkscape, um, from what I can see, great tool. Um, and definitely one of the only options you really have on uh, Linux because uh, obviously no Adobe Illustrator. Um, so yeah, looks pretty solid, comparable to GIMP. Um, and then uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm not suggesting that everybody out there watching this video is uh, a developer or anything like that, but uh, I, I would think the average Linux user is going to be a bit more on the techy side. Sooner or later, you're going to do something with like the terminal. Um, you may end up getting your hands dirty on some code, at least looking at it or needing to make a little bit of a change in order to make a script work, for instance. Um, so sooner or later, I, I think there's a really good chance you're going to need to open up some kind of code file. It might just be HTML or something like that for whatever reason. And um, it, even if you just want to write notes or something like that, having one of these editors is a really good idea. Um, so when it comes to lightweight stuff, uh, Visual Studio Code is one of the ones I like to go with. Uh, obviously, it's a good tool if you want to do you know, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, that kind of stuff. But also, um, just more and more, like if you're the kind of person who maybe wants to mod their games or apply fixes or things like that, uh, you, you'll, you'll probably run into the situation sooner or later where you just have to open up a code file and change it. That doesn't make you a developer. It just means uh, you can follow someone else's instructions. You have to change something. The way to do that is with a code editor rather than just opening up Notepad. It'll just look a lot cleaner for you with things like code line numbering, um, color coded, uh, it, it basically well, that's true. It's, uh, it, color coded elements. It's it's totally escaping me right now. Um, yeah, it, may, it makes things easier to look at and easier to edit and sooner or later you're going to need to open that up probably because you're using Linux and Linux is computing for tech nerds kinda. That was a horrible explanation for visual code by the way but uh, it's a tool I would recommend picking up. If not this or if you actually want to do more real stuff uh, like maybe you want to do debugging or writing code for yourself you might want to pick up something a little bit more heavy like NetBeans, which you can also grab in the Ubuntu software uh, store. But um, for just average people that may need to open things up once in a while, Visual Studio Code is really solid. I like it a lot. Um, and that's going to be it for my top 10 slash 11 programs that you uh, are definitely going to want. Best free programs for Linux. Um, now, of course, if you forgot, number 11, quote unquote, was uh, Wine. And you can also bundle and play on Linux with that. Play on Linux is kind of like uh, Wine, but given a graphical interface to make it a little bit more user-friendly if you want to install those Windows games. But yeah, this video has gone on long enough. I hope that this top 10 list has helped you in uh, picking out some programs for your next Linux installation, or maybe the one you're using to watch this video on right now. In any case, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.